So great to have a fund that's uh, or a company that's actually paying around 8% uh, gross dividends, only LIC that pays monthly dividends. Um, I want to talk about the offer very quickly. Uh, it is a one for 1 1.6 entitlement offer. So anybody who held shares on Friday, um, record dates tomorrow, um, will get up to uh, one new share for every 1.6 they currently have. Actually trades X entitlement today, I believe. That's the first part of the offer, but existing shareholders have no limit. They can also, in the second part of the offer, they can actually bid in for as many shares as they want if they are on the record date of the 13th. And then finally, there is a shortfall offer. Um, we probably expect something like 25 to 40 percent of the of the entitlement to be taken up, which means there's still a fair bit there for new shareholders, and that's one of the benefits for us is actually to broaden that uh, investor base. The offer opens on Thursday, the 15th of August, and closes on the 30th of August, so it's a fairly quick one. But we would expect that, given the need for income, uh, something that's trading on about an 8 percent gross yield uh, with potential upside on that is uh, very attractive. Um, we talked about the entitlement offer. The new investors, you'll, you'll pay your money by the 30th of August, but you get this immediate dividend in September. Benefits are that this will become much bigger. It's $350 million now. If it goes off at the top end, it'll be $550, which makes it a pretty big uh, LIC, more liquid, will lower the MER because a lot of the costs are fixed. Um, and uh, investors will get it at a reasonable discount to where it was trading pre um the offer, so pre the announcement, it was actually trading at, uh, finished at 1.195, so you got about 8% discount to the last traded price pre offer and 6% versus the VWAP in the week before. So a reasonable sort of uh, uh, benefit. And lastly, given this is a capacity constrained uh, strategy, we do not expect to be doing another uh, issue of shares on this. This is likely to be the last sort of um, secondary issue of PL8 shares, unless things change dramatically. We know the backdrop interest rates have fallen significantly and the market's expecting them to basically go to 75 basis points, even 50 basis points by this time next year. Bill Evans has called it very well and he's now rolled his numbers down to going to 50 basis points. I think I saw someone talking 25 basis points. So it's a race to zero. Shares have been, you know, incredibly um, big difference between the yield on the normal market and uh, versus cash at the moment. This is actually only updated annually, so it's the end of last year. So you've seen another half percent come out of that by the time I redraw this at the end of the year, maybe rates will be at half percent and there'll be a five percent gap between the yield on, a, on an index fund and, and uh, cash. Uh, we get consistently uh, over three percent more income. And in fact, we had a record year in the underlying fund last year and, and uh, generated something like 15 or 16 percent income. Um, PL8 has actually traded very well. You all think, oh, you know, it must be overweight the banks and Telstra and those sorts of things. Well, we're not because how we've actually performed significantly better than our investments than actually the banks and Telstra over the last couple of years. Uh, in fact, one of our stories when we marketed this thing is, look, you've got to take a lot of risk if you actually got a portfolio with, you know, just a one or two banks. Telstra, they're obviously under trouble with you know, the NBN issues or uh, Royal Commission fallout. We're still seeing that with Commonwealth Bank, et cetera. You know, we think a diversified portfolio of good dividend paying stocks we're actively managed, we can move to where the dividends are, is going to give you a much better payoff than just sitting in banks all the time. Um, indeed, the banks have cut their dividends, but we had a record year um, because, you know, we made a lot of money out of the resource stocks, big dividends coming from the likes of Rio and BHP and even Fortescue. We don't expect buybacks, but we do still expect to have a pretty good dividend period over the next 12 months, so we've got no concern there. You know, I think this is the thing. Investors want income. Uh, doesn't include three cents special, but since we've listed, we've now uh, paid a long series of, of dividends, all fully franked, and clients can still get, get those back. I mean, if you put that into context, so based on the issue price dollar ten, uh, you've actually got about an eight point three percent gross yield compared to the market of six last year and cash. Well, last year was one point five, this year it's one and going lower. If you include the special. Uh, because investors did get that, then it was actually more like a 12% yield for, for the year grossed up for franking. So, um, you know, we have got an uh, eight-year track record of delivering high yield. Um, it's interesting, I did say what a difference three months makes, but, um, you know, we, we um, did struggle a little bit. The uh, leak did trade a little bit under NTA uh, between those two red lines. Those two red lines are when the ALP announced their franking policy and when they lost the election. Uh, and basically, since then, we've traded at a premium to NTA, and we largely played at a premium to NTA uh, prior to uh, the franking credit issue. So we think that that's off the table. But even um, despite that, we've actually traded at a sort of premium relative to peers. So this is 
using the ASX's um, uh, LIC Australian strategy. Uh, we took the average uh, of, of uh, companies, how they trade rel relative to their NTA and how PLA has traded relative to its NTA. And you can see that basically we've, we've traded better than the average stock. And we think an income focused stock will continue to trade quite impressively uh, given the regular income that we do pay. So, I mean, that is pretty much it. Um, so it is the only week that pays monthly dividends. It is specifically designed for people who want to live off the income of uh, for retirement in particular, but for other people as well. And uh, here's the ability to get, get in and get set and get some decent liquidity um, because it's fairly liquid, but there's no way that, you know, we've got some clients, one client's already put in like 10, $12 million. They want to roll their clients out of uh, some other things and there's no way they'd get access to that liquidity. So it's a great chance for people to get in if they're not already in there or to top up if they are.